Welcome back. In this video, I will show you how to make a UI. To do that, we will need a Ray Interactor. So we need to create it on our hands. So to do that, let's go to the XR origin, camera offset, and create a new empty object. Call one of them left hand ray, and the other one is right hand ray. Okay, resets both uh, of the transforms. And we need a few components. First, add the XR controller and select the left hand first and add the left hand preset and then the right hand and add the right hand preset. Okay, now we can select both of them and add a XR Ray Interactor. Also, we need a component called XR Interactor Line Visual. Yeah, this one adds automatically a line renderer and we can reduce it with like 0.05. Right, as you can see, it uh, has this pink material, which means it won't be rendered. So what we need is to create a new material. I'm going to call it line material. We need to change its shader to alpha blended pre multiply. And we select the left hand and right hand ray and add this material to it. And as you can see, it renders now. Okay, with all that cell, just create a UI now. So right click UI and we are need a canvas. As you can see now, it's uh, pretty big and it's because it's in overlay. So if I add, uh, let's say, a button to it, then if we go to the game mode, it always going to show it in the middle, wherever we look. But that's not what we need. We need it to place it somewhere in our world. We can do that with, on the canvas, just change the screen space overlay to word space. And I'm going to fix the scale and say 0 0.001 on all axes. Reset its position to 0, 0, 0. And now it's just a small canvas, what we have here. All right, I'm going to add a slider to it. I'm just going to move it up slightly, change its scale. Also, I'm going to change the scale of the button as well and move it slightly lower. And I'm going to add a, another one called, so I'm just going to add a drop down as well, increase its scale. And for the final one, I'm just going to create a background to it. So I add a panel and change the color to something grayish and increase its alpha value. As you can see now, it's all the objects are behind this panel. But if we change the order in under the canvas, first one, it will go to the back position. Right. On the canvas, we need to delete the graphics raycaster and add something called track device graphic raycaster. And on the event system, we need to remove the standalone input module and add the XR UI input module. Here, all we need to do is select a preset and add the only one we have here. And that's it. I'm just going to move this canvas out of the way and rotate it a little. And now if we press play mode, we can try it out. As you can see, it does work. You can select any option, press the button and toggle the slider. Also, right now we can, also we can do a distance grab, but right now it's not something we want. So, and also we don't want to see this line renderer all the time. So how can we do that? Well, it's pre pretty easy to make. Just select the right and left hand ray. At the XR Interactor Line Visual, if the, it's invalid color, just change it to change the alpha to zero. So it will be transparent on both of them. We can change this blocked one to zero as well. We won't need it right now. And on the valid color, I'm just going to change the alpha slightly at the start and slightly on the end. The next one, we only want to use it on the UI system. So to do that, we can select the layers we want to use it on. So right now, I use all the layers. If we select nothing and then select the UI and just the UI only, then we can hit play and we can see if it works. Yeah, right now we can not see the line renderer. But if we move it to the canvas, it shows up. Also, if we move it here, it won't work. So what can we use it for? Obviously we can use it for exit the game. On the slider we can set the audio level or we can set, for example, the speed of our character. And on the drop down we can select if we want to continuous turn or 
step turn. So right now, just do that one. I'm going to delete the option C and, and rename the option A to step turn and the option B to continuous turn. OK, and we need to create a script to control it. And we just need to add to the XR origin the continuous turn provider. I'm just going to move it right under the snap turn provider and the presets. I'm going to add the XR default continuous turn provider, the system. I'm just selling the XR origin and we we probably just want to turn with the right hand joystick. So I disable the left hand. So by default, I'm just going to disable the continuous turn provider, select the canvas and I'm going to add the new script to it and I'm going to name it drop drum script. It doesn't really matter at this point. And what we are going to do is reference these two scripts, the action based snap turn provider and the action based continuous turn provider. I just delete the start and the update function. So I add two reference, uh, a snap turn provider and the continuous turn provider. I'm going to create a function, a public function this time, because we are going to use it in the drop down element. I'm going to need a int integer for that one and I'm going to call it index. If we go back to unity and select the drop down, we can add a script to it. I'm going to drag the canvas there and on the drop down script, we have a turn provider select what we just created. And also you can find it down here, turn provider select with an integer. If we want it to work properly, we need to select the, the top one. It's really important. And right now, if uh, this value is zero, then it's going to select the first one, the snap turn. And if it's one, it's going to select the second one. If I have multiple one, then it goes like zero, one, two, three. Okay, so we just basically need an if statement here. So if the index equals zero, then we want the snap turn to be enabled and the continuous turn to be disabled. And if the index is one, then we want it the other way, just like that. But yeah, and on the canvas, we need to drag the XR origin to both of them. And it's automatically going to select the action based snap turn provider and the action based continuous turn provider. So let's hit play. Yeah, and as you can see, it works perfectly. Yeah. One more thing on the button, just select the text and we are going to call it exit. And here we can make another public function and we are going to call it exit. The only thing we need in this function is uh, when we want to quit the game is application.quit. Obviously, we can't quit in the editor, but if we want to check it, we can do a, a debug.log. It's exiting or quitting. OK, then select the button, uh, add a one to the on click and drag the canvas there. Select the drop down script. Well, I should have named slightly different, but it doesn't really matter now. And select the exit script. OK, and we can try it here. And if I press the exit button on the console, you can see an exit message. So it, it does work. OK, I'm just going to delete the debug.log and close the script. And now if we want, we can create a simple, simple scene to it and just add a few other game objects, like uh, whatever you like from the from the prefabs. So I'm going to do that and see you in a bit. Oh yeah, and one more thing, uh, select our target dummies, open its script. We need to reference the box collider. So once we hit it and uh, it plays its death animation, the box collider still stays there. So we need to disable them. What we need to do is uh, get, get the component and when it's hit, we just disable it. So that's, that's all we need to do. Save it and close it up. And this is the game.
then how can we build it and make a proper game? Uh, first, we need to go to the edit project settings and depending on what we want to build too, if it's a um, PC, it's already set up. But if you want to directly install it to the, let's say Oculus Quest 2, then we need to enable the Android settings. Again, just enable the OpenXR and under the OpenXR, just add some interaction layers like we did in our first video. So touch controller, Oculus profile. Okay. So if you want to build it to PC, then go to file, build settings. And right now it's on, it's on PC now and just press build and it's going to build our scene. We need to make sure the scenes, to, scenes in build is the one we have right here is selected. If you want to do that to Android, we need to switch devices. So just select Android and switch platform. Right uh, on the device, we can select all and just head to the settings, project settings layer. And here we will have a few settings. So that's it for this tutorial series. If you liked it, then hit the subscribe and like button and see you in the next one.